So recently, Zhang Yi Optics reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review one of their new cinema lenses that's set to release. And in this video, what we're gonna be doing is going over some test footage as well as reviewing and talking about the new Mitocon 35mm T1.0 Speedmaster cinema lens, and if I think this lens is something that a creator should invest in moving forward. Now, when it comes to products that I'm sent to review by companies, I like to be very transparent with my audience. And for this specific product by this company, which we're gonna be reviewing this lens, I was not paid, nor do I actually get to keep this product this is a product that I actually have to send back to the company so even though all of my reviews are unbiased I do like to let my audience know whether I am being paid to review this product or whether or not I actually got to keep this product so for this video again I'm not being paid nor do I get to actually keep this lens so now that we've got that out of the way let's go ahead and cover what the Mitocon 35 millimeter Speedmaster cinema lens specs have to offer so this lens offers a smooth long and precise focus throw whether you're actually focusing this lens with your hand or you're using a follow focus system attached to the actual lens itself. Now the build of the actual lens itself is a high quality metal which is obviously going to be a plus as opposed to having a lens that's made of plastic. We all have been there before where we've used a plastic lens and it feels like any kind of bump or any kind of drop will automatically shatter and break the lens. This is a very high quality durable metal lens so that is a positive when it comes to this actual Speedmaster cinema lens. When it comes to the aperture range of this camera it goes from a T1.0 all the way up to a T16. Now this lens offers a stepless silent aperture control and what I mean by that is is some lenses offered will anytime you go to adjust the aperture you'll have to deal with steps basically going from each stop of aperture to the next and as you're adjusting that you'll literally click into the next aperture so for this specific cinema lens there's no steps there's it's stepless and it's silent so this is a positive when it comes to this actual lens when you go from each aperture to the next you just smoothly transition from one aperture to the next. Now when it comes to this lens, just like most other cinema lenses, this is a manual focus lens. It does not have autofocus, just like most other cinema lenses do not offer autofocus. This is a manually controlled lens. And finally, this lens has a nine rounded blade aperture and the mounts offered are for Canon RF, Sony FE, Fujifilm FX, and M43 cameras like the Lumix GH5. Now another plus and a surprising positive when it came to this actual lens was the price. When it comes to reviewing lenses, we all wanna know how sharp is the lens, what's the aperture range on the lens, and of course, what's the actual price of the lens? To my surprise, when I went to go actually look up the price of this lens, I was shocked to find that this lens ranges from only $499 to $599, and the range of price only differs because of whatever mount that you wanna get for the camera. Depending on what mount you're gonna get is depending on the price point. So for the specific Sony mount, it's gonna come in at $5.99. So for me, that was a huge plus when it comes to this lens was the fact that this cinema lens with all of these specs came in at only $5.99. That right there is a huge plus. So now that we've covered the price, another positive when it came to this lens was the aperture range, which goes all the way down from a T1.0 to a T16. To be honest, there's not really any times where I've ever needed to go to T16, and if I've had to put my f-stop down more than that, what I'll do is, is I'll put a actual ND filter on it and then raise the stops on the ND filter. But the fact that this cinema lens goes all the way to a T1.0, providing incredible bokeh on the actual image, is amazing, and that's a huge positive when it comes to this actual cinema lens. When I went out with Minute to test this lens out, we attached this follow focus system to the lens, and I was conveniently able to put the focus pull knob onto the back of the camera for easy focus while I was filming. The smoothness of the focus this lens offers, especially when you have a follow focus attached as well, was a huge plus for me while out actually testing this cinema lens. So now that we've covered the price and the aperture of the lens, let's talk about the actual sharpness and the bokeh that this lens offers. Now, when it comes to the actual sharpness of this lens, the Mitocon Speedmaster lens delivers in what you would expect out of an actual cinema lens when it comes to the sharpness of the lens. But the real positive or plus to this actual lens is the creamy bokeh that it provides. And the creamy bokeh is easily obtainable with the Mitocon Speedmaster cinema lens thanks to the fact that the aperture range goes all the way down to a T1.0 with this cinema lens. So now that we've discussed all of the pluses of the Mitocon Speedmaster cinema lens, let's go over the main issue and the main problem that I found with this lens. Now after using this specific mount, which was the Sony mount, the main problem that I found with this lens was I'm using a Sony a7S III, which is a full frame Sony camera. And in order to use this lens, I had to switch into APS-C crop mode. 
And in order for me to go into APS-C crop mode, I have to switch my camera from 4K into HD, which is 1920 by 1080. When you wanna use this lens on a full frame Sony camera, you are not able to shoot in 4K mode because of the fact that you have to shoot in APS-C mode or it's super 35 millimeter. When it comes to the Mitocon Speedmaster cinema lens, this was the only problem that I actually did find when it came to this specific cinema lens. Now, after spending time with this lens and shooting test footage and reviewing this lens, the main question obviously comes down to, would I recommend this lens to other creators? And the answer is yes and no. For this specific lens mount, which was meant for a Sony, if you can get past the fact that when it comes to shooting in a full frame Sony camera, you're gonna have to switch into APS-C crop mode, which will only allow you to shoot in 1920 by 1080. If you can get past the fact that you won't be able to shoot in 4K with this lens, then I would advise you to buy this lens. However, if it's too big of an issue, if you're shooting on a full frame Sony and you wanna have the option to record in 4K, but with this lens, you won't be able to, then I would advise you to look into a different type of lens. The price point and all the specs this speed Master Cinema Lens offers, however, makes it a great introduction to learning cinema lenses and what you'll have to deal with when you possibly start moving up to bigger and more expensive cinema lenses. There's way more positives to this lens as opposed to the one negative that I did find with this lens. And specifically, it was because of the fact that I used it on a full frame Sony. If I'd have had a mount for the Canon RF or even for the Red Komodo, this would have been a different story. The only negative, again, I did find with this lens was the fact that I had to go from 4K mode to 1080. Let me know down below if this is a cinema lens that you are interested in and if you would invest in the Mitocone Speedmaster cinema lens. And as always, if you did find this video helpful and you wanna see more review videos like this, do me a huge favor, it does help out the channel. Go ahead and leave a like, comment, and share this video, as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and click the notification bell to stay up to date with all the content that is releasing onto this channel. Until the next time, guys, I love y'all. Stay safe and I'll see you on the next video.